Good, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Berean Workshop, where we are embarking on a new um, sort of like series. Yes, yes, yes. So we are looking at harmonizing faith and family. And um, wow, we really dug into this one big time, didn't we? It's a mess that we need to address, but I suppose it's one of those focal areas which we really need to deal with and address. Yeah, yeah. So um, before we go into the series, I start to talk a little bit about the purpose of it and why we're doing it. Um, I don't know, I just feel the need to share a little bit of what family means to us, mm. you understand? Mm. Uh, I, let me start very quickly, right? Because I brought it up. <laughs> so growing up, um, I I moved around a lot. So my yeah. mom and dad, my dad were not, um, they, they separated really early when I was, I was still very young. And I found myself moving from home to home and going from one family house mm. or, fam or friends of a family house to another. And I would ob observe, especially the families who were kind of sort of like a, a complete unit, yeah. mom, dad, yeah. and kids. And I'll, I'll always be the observer, yeah. you know, and I had always desired to be in that kind of family unit because I'd never really seen it, you yeah. know. Yeah. So that's why when we decided to do this, I thought, wow, this is so important. It's, it's, it means a lot to me. So I thought, okay, let's start this uh, by sharing our own, a little bit of our own personal, um, you know, passions and why this is so, why, why this means so much to us. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, not particularly. I, my family was... Okay. So you guys were, we were a unit. We, we, are, uh, yeah, we were a unit, but yeah. like, um, I mean, like the phrase says, we're the sum total of our experiences. Yeah. So we bring to the table what we've experienced. Mm. And obviously yeah. that impacts on the families that we have now yes. as part of society. So we want to look at it from a godly point of view and then uh, try and instill that into our current families and hopefully that trickles down into society Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's the... Um, that's the the what's the word I'm looking for right now. So it's 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 the purpose of this of this right. So in yeah. my case, right. So I we're going to talk about baggage in yeah. a minute. Yeah. So yeah. I started my own family about 20, 21 years ago, and and I think I had some expectations of family because of where I was coming from. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, my expectations were not really realistic because it was it was formed from. Um, what yeah, I realistic. hoped, yes, <laughs> what I hoped family was supposed to be like. Yeah. So that's why it's important to actually say, okay, no, rather than going on my own expectation, what is, who, wh wh whose idea yeah. was family? What's the standard? And what exactly yeah. was yeah. the standard? So that's what we're going to address. Yeah, so yeah. that's yeah, that's why it's, it's pretty close to heart yeah. for me. Yeah. But like you said, you had the family unit as well. And we're some total, like you said, of all of our experiences. And again, we want to just make sure that we are measuring a lot of that experience and mm. a lot of the lessons that we've learned measuring it against the right stuff. Yeah. Let's uh, let's begin then. Um, let, let, let's start with the situation, right? Because it's always good to say, okay, you know what's triggered this for you? What's triggered this? We look around us and we have seen how um, family values is not where it used to be. No. no. I mean, it's easy to see that the, the family is the smallest unit which God uses. So society is reflective of the family mm. itself. So if the family loses those values, it's automatically reflected in society. And at the moment, you can see there's a, a change of standards, as it were. So mm. God's standard is not the standard. Man has set his own standard. So he defines what is good for him and what is bad. Whereas the scriptures, or God himself, our creator, mm. should set those standards. And obviously by addressing and telling people or letting people know what the standard is, then we can start to judge ourselves by that standard. So uh, as society, as families, even church and church and society we've fallen short of that standard and it's time to start mm. talking about it so it's a very powerful statement that you made there about how the family unit is the smallest unit that god uses and the family unit is also a, a huge indicator mm. of of society yeah, yeah, yeah. very very powerful mm. and i think maybe that's the reason why sometimes people when maybe say for example they want to move into an area they almost want to first of all get a feel for what that area looks like you yeah, understand yeah. you know you want to do your homework. Is this a family? And that's why, the, you know, they say, oh, this is a family environment. This mm. is because, you know, it's like per perhaps you've got like this, this this small community of people and they've got the schools yeah. uh, because they're focusing on bringing their, their children up type thing. And then they've got other amenities as well that cater to families. Mm. So that community, uh, most of the, um, I guess, amenities and things 
within that community is 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 geared towards promoting the family sphere. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. It comes it trickles down from the simple unit as well. Yeah, family. yeah. I mean, I was looking at some of these the statistics. I think I and see you can Google them easily and get these. So it mm. was uh, broken families. So divorce. Thirty-three percent of all marriages end in divorce. Single parents, fifteen percent of families are single parent families. Th- sorry to interrupt. Thirty-three yeah. percent total. Yeah, thirty-three percent of all marriages across are, the yeah, board. This was the UK. In the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in the, the UK. UK. Okay, in the UK. Yeah. Okay, thirty-three percent. Yeah. So one in every about one in every three. Yeah, they end up in divorce. Okay. So okay. this is broken families. So right. There's single parent families. Fifteen percent of all families in the UK. Right. And forty-six percent of all births. Out of wedlock, forty six percent of all births outside of wedlock. Okay, so it, those figures are quite staggering, and as as much as we realize that these things also impact the church. Yeah, um, the thing is that we don't, you know, we don't disregard or treat them with scorn as much as we used to. You know, I don't know, twenty, thirty years, they've become part of society, and we've come to accept them as the norm. So that's where the issue is. So uh, when you mention forty six percent. Forty six percent out of, of all births outside of wedlock. Yeah. Um for some of our viewers they'll be saying, So what? What's the big deal? That is the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, that is the that problem. Is the that problem. standard is missing, is that it hasn't been defined. And uh, we are trying to set the standard and, ourselves. And how did it from the from the I guess mm. the consciousness of society at large, mm. how did we move from this is not acceptable it's not yeah. god standard to where we are now where it's like oh you know what it, it happens how, how did that happen i think this is where you come but we mentioned the baby boomers yeah. isn't it where it, this is the the generation that is post-war just after the war so mm. they've come from a very harsh generation now is it how long have they been five six years yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine, three, four, five, yeah six years yeah, six, six. it's a time of dependence on god mm. people are praying and seeing values then they come out of that and it's a relaxed uh, you know time so some of these values begin to erode and that information, those values are now trickling to to the next generation. Yeah, so yeah. we begin to set our own standards. Laws begin to get passed which don't embrace God's values. Yes. So society just seems to... So again, another quick question for you. How did we get to the point where laws are now being put in place that don't promote godliness? Again, it's the fact that that information... It's not trickling, it's not trickling down. down. And maybe politics as well. If, yeah. we, if we call it out, I mean, politics is not all bad, but we know that um, if we're brutally honest, mm. some of the policies are to win votes, yeah. one, two, mm-hmm. uh, and to be all fair, you know, they also there's also an element of wanting to protect the vulnerable, yeah. but some people jump on the bandwagon and it gets abused, I it think. Does. It so, does definitely. So, yeah. and, and, and if there isn't that godly measure against some of these laws, then slowly, like you say, it fades away in the mm. consciousness. Yeah, they become, they become uh, what's the word they use? Uh, the, the erosion of the law is based on the fact that it's an old law, it doesn't make sense. It's the Bible, the Bible is... Uh, Out, outdated. Yeah, outdated. Yeah. Oh, that is one of the mm. one of the strongest lies that I have witnessed in my, t- my time. Yeah. Outdated. Yeah. What does that even... Nobody can tell me what that means. <laughs> what does that mean yeah. gravity is not outdated but some of the godly laws because the, god, the same god who created gravity is the one who wrote the bible so how can the bible be outdated but other other uh, uh anyway, anyway, anyway let's let's <laughs> let me know let me know straight from from our topic so so let's 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 sort of like bring it back so we're talking about erosion yeah. how we can see where some of this how it sipped into the into community mm-hmm. how family values then began to almost take a back seat uh, uh, in favor of um, what's popular? Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Popular. If it feels good, just do it. Type yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, we've set our own standards. Yeah, we've set our own standards. So we've replaced God's standards with yeah. our yeah. own standards. What Humanism. Yeah. What What is acceptable? To yeah. Us, which is not necessarily biblical. So we're straying from the God's way of doing things. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So before we look at God's standards, because we, you know, we've talked about. You know where we are right now with the biggest challenge with families. Now I know that there's some families out there, yeah. family units that are still very strong, yeah, yeah. that are very godly, and it's interesting that I have I have noticed and I've seen a lot of families, strong family units that are not necessarily like um, Christian or they don't yeah. have a faith, yeah. but they but they held on but to the family values. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, that's that's rather the, 
it's too funny that I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They do mm-hmm. uphold a certain level of morality, but all mm-hmm. morality comes from the scripture. It does, anyway. it does, it does. So by us not having that morality, we are actually straying away from the book that promotes these Absolutely, values, right? absolutely. And I think for me, the most important thing about morality and taking it seriously is because mm-hmm. it's important to God. Mm-hmm. God is the creator. Mm-hmm. He is the one who gives us life. He's the one who gives us breath. He's the one who gives us meaning. Mm. So if it's important to him and he owns us, yeah. then we need to make sure mm. that we also align to what's important to him. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of Job. Mm. The book of Job. Yeah, yeah. So, Talk to us about that. Yeah. Chapter one of Job uh, describes it saying, Now Job was a man who lived in the land of us. Yes. And he was an upright and righteous man. Mm. So. And he feared God. The first thing you see, obviously, his value, his first value is God at the top. Then he describes that he had seven kids, uh, seven sons and three daughters. Then you see family Pharaoh. Then he describes his, his, his wealth. So you see the order of things. It's God first, family second, and then his wealth. So you see next after that, uh, Satan, or the accuser goes before God and says, okay, you value this guy. You protected him because he does righteous things. Yeah. So, I've lost my spot. I've lost it. No, you're talking, yeah, 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 you're talking about, you know, the importance of, you know, he was a family person. Yeah. He had, you know, even God acknowledged. Yeah, yeah, God valued him. Because valued him because, valued because, because his yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like right. you're saying as well, he took it so seriously that, you, you said this earlier on, yeah. that when his kids met and they had any kind of celebration, what did he do? He went and sacrificed <laughs> just in just case. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case somebody, one of them stepped out of line. Yeah. Because the fear of the Lord was there. Mm-hmm. And it's not the trembly kind of, it's just the fear of, oh, this is important. Righteousness is important. Godliness is important to God. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure I am. There's an oversight. Mm-hmm. The father's oversight mm-hmm. upon his kids, mm-hmm. his children. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's another benefit that we've been talking about. Because mm-hmm. we're talking about benefits as well. Benefits of family units and the yeah. benefits of actually having sort of a God-fearing mm-hmm. father. Because we're talking about the father being the visionary yeah. and the mother being the nurturer. Yeah, okay. mm. And yeah, this is um, of Exodus 20, where he sets the law. He says, honor your, your father and mother yeah. so that it may go well for you in the land which I have placed you. So yeah. you can see straight away, when the children begin to honor their parents, yeah. it trickles down into society because mm. it will go well for you in the land. Mm. So the responsibility of the children is to honor. To honor means to obey, mm. as in to respect, to value yeah. what the parents uh, put in with their children. Absolutely. That's their responsibility. The father is a visionary. Like Jacob, Jacob prophesied over his kids. He did. You know, he, he gave did. them vision. He says, uh, this is where you're going. You know, this is what you're going to do. So he's the one with, uh, with a bigger picture. Whereas the mother always is the one with detail. Mm-hmm. You know, he's uh, Rebecca, is the one who dressed up Jacob to get the blessing. You know, so <laughs> we are going is. to touch on that one. We need to, we need to treat that one. Um, uh, very clear and unpack mm. that because yeah. I, I raised that with you earlier on yeah, didn't I so yeah. we'll talk about that as well. yeah but anyway nurturing and also while the the Bible says something like, and, and it's kind of like uh, loosely in my, in my memory but that children are like arrows in the hand mm. of, a, of, of a hunter yeah, yeah. And, and so it makes me think what do hunters do they put the, the, the arrow in the yeah. string and then they stretch the string and then they direct yeah. the arrow where they believe so fathers have a vision yeah. now I know there's the whole idea of or, or we're, we're trying to move away from the idea where fathers uh, having ex- stretching that vision beyond yeah, what God has yeah, asked them to yeah. do. I say, you, you must be a lawyer when God really wants him to, or him yeah. or her, to be yeah. something. Else. That's not what we're talking no. about. We're talking about the vision of of respect, of knowing, finding out who you are in, yeah, in, yeah. in the Lord, mm. and and then you know being st- having a strong mm. um, character, godly character, having morals, mm. you understand, and also um, with a view to be useful in life. Mm. All of those strong values. That's the whole idea of a hunter, because a hunter is someone who's oh, in those days were very, very disciplined, yeah. um, um, very skilled. Yeah. And so, um, then the father is a skilled yeah. person yeah. who would who would do the direct. Yeah. yeah, that's what I love about that scripture. Like you said, the the father is skilled, so they've yeah. acquired knowledge. They've, but yes, they've honed their skills. So when they're direct, life life someone, skills. Yeah, life, life skills. skills are in fact life skills. Transferable yeah. life skills, yeah. practical skills, value, scripture. So mm. you're, you're directing your children into the future where you mm. don't go they will go it's like the case of elijah and elisha mm. so elisha has got the double portion of elijah and he calls him my father yeah my father so you know 
So when you say where you don't go, they will go. So they where, where we go. don't reach, yeah. even where we, the, the heights that we don't reach, yeah. uh, it's on us it's to on prepare us. them mm. to 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 at, le at least get there and beyond there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, 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 beautiful. So you can't wing it. No, let's you put can't. it that way. You, you have can't. to make sure you're the skilled one as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So you. So let's go back very quickly to to um, um, Job. Yeah. Um, there's so much we, we can. I think oh. we're going to do a series on that. Definitely, it's yeah. going to be part of the series. Um, you talked about how he was a godly man. How he, he was so mindful of his children. He was mindful of um, his, his spiritual responsibilities yeah. over his family. We saw that very clearly. Um, we also saw how he demonstrated um, faith, being faithful and what it means to, to actually wait upon the Lord. Mm. In good times, right, it's easy to say, yeah, you know, I'm a follower of Christ and everything. But how do you do in the bad times? Mm. And we see what Job did. And mm -hmm. he was a good example to his wife. Mm -hmm. Because his wife wanted him to, look, press the yeah. press the eject button. Yeah, yeah. self-destruct <laughs> button. But he didn't. You know, I think, again, for me, that is such a powerful lesson mm -hmm. of the responsibility that men and fathers, and because mm -hmm. uh, we, we talk about family, of course, we, we, we've talked about fathers, mothers, mm -hmm. parents. But we should also talk about husbands, because as a husband, there's a responsibility mm -hmm. there as well. Very, very mm -hmm. powerful. I think you covered this in uh, based on finances, mm. the integrity. Yes, you, you, you are what you are. What you say. Absolutely, yeah. the word and the deed have mm. to match. Yeah. I, was, I was going through Job. I mm -hmm. think it's in Job twenty nine, mm. and again, Job is discussing what he was before this thing occurs to him, and he he kind of highlights that hierarchy in a way. He's talking about God first, family, and then his wealth. But he talks about the wisdom and the integrity that he has in it as well. Yeah. It's just amazing that this guy, this character, almost is talking about righteousness. He says he will uh, kind of discipline the unrighteous. Mm. He talks about when he went to the marketplace, everybody listened to him. Yes. And he's promoting righteousness yeah, yeah. and integrity. He, he's almost bringing it back into fashion, which is what we want to do here. We want to say that righteousness builds a nation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we're able to bring those principles those values that are scriptural, then we can say that honestly, righteousness does promote a nation. Yeah. yeah. It goes back again to what we're talking about in, in faith and finance, uh, order and chaos. Mm. Righteousness promotes order, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And if, when we start moving away from righteousness, and I love what you said there about how when he stood in the market and the gates, because the gates was where the mm. where the authorities would meet, where the big decisions were made. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the people would listen. Mm. They would listen. And it was promoting righteousness because it was important. Sometimes we think righteousness is only for our benefit, but yeah. it's not. It's for, like you said, the family unit will dictate what happens in the, the society. Like, in the society. Yeah. So that's why, that's why it's so important that righteousness starts with an individual, expands into the, into the family unit, yeah. and then begins to go into the community and then society at large. Yeah. And when there is righteousness, as you said, righteousness exalts a nation, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and um, sin is a reproach. Yes, yeah. It brings chaos. Yeah. It brings chaos and sin, and people used to say, "Oh, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin." It, it, it's it's very it's not so much about it's more about the it, it's sin, uh, uh, breaking a rule, mm. right? Breaking a law, breaking the principle, yeah. right? Has consequences mm. attached to it. So we're not saying we're joy killers, don't have fun. No, just be you know if you contravene a principle, godly yeah. principle, it's got consequences. It's the erosion of society as we see it. Knife crime is rampant. You know, everything around mm. us talks about fear and evil and bad. And whether people are believers or not, they mm. do see the degradation of society. Yeah. It's literally going the wrong way. And the reason why is because we don't highlight righteousness or the value of it in our families, uh, in our society. Yeah. yeah. So we have a lot of work to do. It's, it's <laughs> a tough one to battle because yeah. it's, uh, we're fighting against the grain. You know, we're going against what people where people have changed their values. Yeah. yeah. Do we have time to talk about God's original design for the family? Why is this important to him? Because we said it's important to him. Yeah. We agree it's important to yeah. him. But why is it important to him? Why is this all like your family? You know, and what's, why is it so significant and so weighty mm. that the family unit is preserved, that it is, you know, um, 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 you know sort of like guarded? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have time to talk about that briefly? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. 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 God yeah. creates man. Yes. And he puts them in a garden. Yeah. In Eden. So mm -hmm. everything else is like complete in the sense that it's full, but it's incomplete in the fact that you know, he creates the garden in Eden, which is the perfect place. Yeah. So that's the original place. Yes. And he tells there's two people mm -hmm. to multiply and fruit, 
fill this whole mm. massive, mm -hmm. massive planet mm -hmm. with meat. So obviously, it's necessary that when we procreate, these people should have filtered information from their parents, which they can move on to the rest. Of the yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So the earth is the Lord's, yeah, yeah. the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. um, we are created in his image. I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing yeah. and summarizing what you're saying. The earth is his, he's created it for his own good pleasure. Mm -hmm. He knows all the reasons why he's got done that. And then we can appreciate the beautiful world. Even if, even in its fallen state, it's still a very beautiful yeah. world. He puts people created in his own image and likeness, yeah. which means we are, we are a reflection of him. Mm -hmm. Not not just yeah. how how we you know how we look, but in the in the way we are. Mm. So when he wants the family unit to stay glued, uh, uh, um, um, monogamy type yeah. thing, faithful, um, it's a reflection of him. Mm. It's the original, the intent. original yeah. intent, yeah. you know, um, and that's the reason why that that's where the order comes in because mm. when we are aligned to what God. Uh, values yeah. and and God's ways, yeah. then there's order and there's beauty. Yeah. When He created everything, He said, "This is good. This yeah. is beautiful. This is good. That yeah. is in its nature." When things broke, what yeah. happened? Nah, it started yeah. to become sort of like chaotic. Yeah. And I mean, this is the only time in the whole creation account God yeah. says, uh, "He says it's good. It's good. It's good. It's very good." Then He yeah. says, "He sees man alone." Then He says, "It's, it's not, not good." good. Mm, you know? There we go. Yeah, so there it's not go. good it's for not man good to, to be alone. alone. Yeah. So then, man. Woman and man become separate. They are complementary in that mm. woman is drawn out from mm. man. Mm. Mm. So that's the original intent for man and woman to uh, procreate, to fill, to conquer. Because Eden is the perfect place. Yeah. And what they're meant to do is to make the whole of earth like the garden of Eden. Yeah, mm. that experience. So, yeah, so they're supposed to be trickling down this mm. information as they procreate. But then chapter 1 and chapter 2 are the only accounts in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, where you have perfection. And Revelation 21 and 22, the last two chapters, are perfection again. The rest is the fallen state mm -hmm. of the world, seemingly. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very difficult for us to be able to define a perfect family. But we know the original intent. Man and woman. Procreate, multiply, fill, dominate. Absolutely. That is the entire uh, design. Purpose Absolutely. Of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll take those one at a time. In, in sort of like subsequent yeah. recordings which we, because we have to do it justice yeah, yeah, we need yeah, to do it justice yeah, yeah. and i think as we do that as well because you're looking at um like a number of attributes mm. that define um an effective family unit yeah. because we're talking about effective family units so yeah. maybe we'll, we can break that down a little bit more um another another scripture comes to mind that you know from from that talks about bring up a child in a way yeah. And when he grows up, he will not depart from it yeah. because again, we can we can dig into what yeah. that really means, yeah. you know. Because I think when we discussed this last time, we, we we really felt that God is saying that the way human beings are created in our DNA, yeah. we because we know God is our original source. Mm -hmm. um, when we hear the the righteousness of God, it actually it actually fills a void inside mm -hmm. of us. And when that when that thing is missing, yeah. then that's why we're gonna we're gonna start finding a lot of people who yes. feel lost. Yeah. Okay. Who, uh, the chaos. The chaos. chaos they feel there, lost. Yeah. They feel what's the meaning of life. Mm. They can't make things out because there is something screaming out for the code mm. from the from the maker on how to live mm. an orderly life, a good life, a beautiful life, a godly life. Mm. Knowledge already that uh, for most of us in society we're already in this in this uh, broken world, this yeah. broken system. And how do you change now? You know, I mean, you haven't been effective. That godly role yes. in the house. Uh, how do you turn things around? Yeah, how do you turn things around? Mm. So that's the mm. big one. Mm. Uh, how do we effect change? Mm. And this is what we want to address again. Yes, you know? yes, mm. yes, very important. And just as we're talking right now, so how do you turn things around? Because when we, we I think we've, we've established it, if we're created in God's image and likeness, mm -hmm. if we're outside of His order, yeah. we will never feel peace, mm. we'll never feel joy, <laughs> because we're outside of the order, the principles that keep things together. Yeah. You know, so we need to go back to the source. We need to go back to the source. Yeah. So this is not about oh religion. It's not about going to hell or not going to hell. No, mm. this is about even our own well-being. Mm. You know, yes, you know, there's the, the whole talk of hell and it is important. Yeah. But, but I think what's even more important is relationship. Yeah. Right standing, right that relation. See, right standing relationship because it's based the righteousness. Mm. Righteousness is right standing with him. Yes, the right yeah. relationship. Mm. You know, so let's let's put hell to one side because that's that's it's as important as it is. Yeah. In this conversation, is about the right relationship mm -hmm. with our maker. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Yeah. Fantastic. So I think we'll leave it here. Um, we'll, we'll leave it for now and then come back and we, we'll tackle those 
those pointers of what makes an effective family. Mm. We look at the father's role, we look at the mother's role, children, parent, mm. husband, uh, look at relationships. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, by, by God's grace, God will give us all of the keys. Now, we're not doing this in our own strength. Mm. We believe that we're just vessels mm. and, and uh, the Lord will, will basically um, use us. So, um, as we always say, you know, hope you found value in our conversation. Um, these topics and these talks can actually get strengthened if we hear from our, our viewers, you know, mm. if they can maybe just share their thoughts, mm. um, ask some some questions that maybe they can take to the Lord and mm. search for answers and then maybe address in this um, yeah. this form. Comments are important and let us know whether you are engaging yeah. with, with the content. So it's yeah. important for you to like, to subscribe and to come back again. Thank you. And on that note, we bid you farewell for now. Bye. And see you soon. Thank you. Stay safe and be blessed. Thank you. Bye.